best pally, I'm Allie, and I'm about to mail my spit to a stranger. Welcome to a better version of you. A while ago on the Total Fit Heads podcast, we had the founder and CEO of the DNA company on, and we talked about genetic optimization. It sounds a little like crazy sci-fi, but the idea is that your own personal genes are very unique to you, and they tell all of your cells what to do. So if you decode them, you can figure out what to do to optimize your lifestyle and diet and environment and a whole lot more. And this is different from traditional genetic testing because they're showing you insights and actions to take to be a better you. This isn't about where you come from, it's about where you can go. I would very much like to know scientifically how I can get closer to superhuman. And this is awesome because those steps are different for everyone. As we learned with levels, it's very personal. So let's get to decoding. Just kidding, you're supposed to wait an hour to get a clean sample from your mouth. So now, let's get to decoding. What the heck is this? I have a fill line? Jeez, I thought I would just have to swab my cheek if this is a serious volume. I feel weird about doing this on camera. Yeah, okay. This is gonna take a minute. Spit until the amount of saliva, not bubbles, reaches the top. Let's just jump ahead to that. Okay, in case you were curious, it took approximately 14 loogies. Close the lid till it clicks. Spit funnel off, put cap on, and shake. Was that five seconds? Okay. Back in the thing, package up my biohazard. Now to sign away my consent, which I'm fine with because other genetic testing companies make their money by selling your data. And Kashif made it very clear that the DNA company makes their money helping you be a better person. So my secrets are safe with him. Now to mail this off. And while we wait, you should definitely check out the episode we had with the founder because it is fascinating to hear how he talks about how unique everyone is and how specific they get. I'll use me as an example. Dopamine does two things, pleasure and reward. There's one gene that determines how dense your receptors are that bind the dopamine. I personally have the lowest version of the receptors, which means the least density. So I don't bind much, so I don't feel. So what does that lead to? Depression. Or I feed it with something. And if I go down the pleasure route, it could be addiction or achievement. I got a hit of dopamine from doing good and I just wanted more and more and more and more. That's why I'm entrepreneurial. I went down that path. Yeah, it seems like they can even use your genes to tell what your personality is like. I'm really excited to see what this report says. And also nervous. Should I be nervous? My genes probably think I'm nervous. Sweet, I got my report. And holy crap, it is long. There are a lot of things in here. And also, this is just one. There are seven total. Luckily, they let me book a report navigation section with someone that works at the DNA company. So I'm going to chat with them right now. Hello. Yes, hello, this is Stacy with the DNA Health Coaching Team. On a recorded line, is this Sally speaking? Yes, this is Allie, also on a recorded line. Okay, congrats on taking this step to have your reports done. Today we'll be going over how to navigate them and also go over some solutions that we have to make the results more actionable. Okay, awesome. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad to have your help. Yeah. Now I feel more qualified to show you what these reports are showing me, although I feel a little naked showing you my DNA. I guess that comes with the territory of being a guinea pig for you for a living. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of information, so I'm gonna pick out just a few remarkable things from each of the seven reports, which are studying before I present. Mood, immunity, hormone, sleep, cardiovascular, diet and nutrition, and longevity. In the mood report, she mentioned this on the phone, I am more likely to be an entrepreneur. That's so cool to know I have the entrepreneur gene. I'm also a big fan of placebos, so I'll take it. And for some things, they'll show you this spectrum, which is really cool. And for this one, you can see that I'm less likely to display depressive tendencies due to lack of purpose. I know I exist and it's contained in this video. I'm here to make things for you. And my genes say that that's probably gonna be the case. Of course then, my tolerance to burnout isn't great, so maybe I shouldn't be on YouTube trying to publish every week. But all this is interesting to know, and then they give recommendations, so it's not just like, hey, you suck and burn out, it's also, here's how to deal with it. Okay, moving on to immunity. My DNA coach mentioned this. My methylization is a D, that's a crap grade. And again, they tell me the specific supplements I can take to help this out, and they tell you the specific type of supplement because here it's saying some could be actually harmful to you so now I know based on my genes what type of vitamin B9 and B12 I should take and I wouldn't even have thought to take those at all but my genes are asking for it and now I know okay moving on to the hormone report this is really interesting it supports my hate of cardiovascular exercise based on this 
no cardio more than 60% of my max heart rate, which I do, but not more than two days per week. So it's good to know that that's fine. And also that some people are better at that than I am. I feel like we kind of have this belief that, yeah, you work out to get fitter, but the idea of fitting the type of workout to your genes is so cool. It's also mentioning that I'd be better at strength focus versus hypertrophy, meaning heavier weights but less reps. <laughs> Sweet, I'm a power lifter from now on, thank you. And now moving on to the sleep report, here's another range. I'm less likely to have suboptimal environmental response, meaning my carcolepsy makes sense when I fall asleep in a car all the time or on planes. Yeah, because the environment's not affecting me. And that's a gene. So I shouldn't be annoyed at other people that stay awake on planes and try and talk to me because they're just genetically different. And now moving on to the cardiovascular report. This is actually mostly the reason that I wanted to do this DNA test because you may have seen my high cholesterol video. I keep getting increasingly higher cholesterol readings and so I am considering, I'm not considering, I'm going to very soon go vegan. Because I've done some diet interventions, I obviously work out and it doesn't seem to do anything. So it might mean that I have hypercholesterolemia and this is telling me, yeah, I am more likely to have an increased risk of high cholesterol. I mean, I guess I can blame my parents at this point. But the reason I'm going vegan is because it's my last resort before they put me on statins. Oh, but there's a statin report in this too. Some people don't metabolize statins well, so they're not even a candidate to use that. And guess what? I am at high risk of being a bad statin user. So now this gives me two arguments to go vegan. Oh, but wait. I had no idea that I could potentially be lactose intolerant. I eat tubs of Greek yogurt weekly and it may be holding me back. I may be having hidden inflammation or could feel a lot better. There's another argument for getting rid of it. But wait. On the call, Stacy told me about how only 20% of people are good candidates for being vegan because they can process that much plants. You'd have to have the optimal FUT2 gene, which four out of five people don't. Oh, I do. That's what, are you at number four? That I should be vegan. This is very compelling. So yeah, stay tuned for my I went vegan for 60 days, here's what happened video. But it is really cool because before I had a hunch that I should probably test this out and now I have concrete evidence in my DNA. Now after all that gloom and doom about my cholesterol and then never eating something with a face again. Let's be more positive. Check out this longevity report. So it has a lot of stuff about your brain, insulin resistance, stress, muscle retention, skin, even wrinkles and gray hair, but we need to look at the longevity gene for me because holy crap, this is cool. Carrying at least one GLL in your gene increases your potential for longevity. And I have two Gs. Look at, look at the words that are written on this page. Your longevity level, superhuman. I would very much like to know scientifically how I can get closer to superhuman. So now I have a bunch of stuff to try out to attempt to get more optimized. And it seems like health and fitness really is just experimenting and trying things out, but it's good to know that I'm choosing my experiments more intelligently through DNA. And if you like this, you'll probably like seeing my high cholesterol video. I'll put that down there for you. I am super uncomfortable talking about this publicly. Telling you I have high cholesterol is thoroughly embarrassing. But being scared is no reason not to do a thing. And discomfort is usually my sign that I should be doing said thing. Like deadlift.